Hello, my name is Hilary Weller and I'm going to talk about multi-fluid modelling of atmospheric convection. This is work I've done with two PhD students, Will McIntyre, who is now at Exeter University, and Dan Shipley. This work has recently been published in a paper in James. There are large persistent errors in modelled precipitation in the tropics. The top plot shows observed precipitation and the bottom plot is a multi-model mean from the IPCC AR4 report. Many of the errors are consistent between models and they have been linked with subgrid scale parameterization of convection. However, the answer is not to go to higher resolution and switch off convection parameterization. These are results from Maher et al. 2018. The top left shows observed precipitation. The middle is model precipitation from a model using convection parameterization and the top right is the model precipitation without a convection parameterization. This shows that the mean precipitation is more accurate with a convection parameterization than without and that the convection is too strong uh, without a parameterization. However, not all aspects of convection are more accurate with a parameterization than without. These wave number frequency plots from Maher et al. show the power of convectively coupled Kelvin, Rosby and mixed Rosby gravity waves. The simulation with convection parameterization have insufficiently powerful convectively coupled waves and this is alleviated when the convection parameterization is switched off. Coupling of convection with planetary waves involves coupling of the large scale upper level divergence with the vertical motion in convection. This will not be represented accurately if convection does not transport mass vertically. These results from Stephen et al. show that parameterized convection occurs more often than observed rainfall and is too light. What is going wrong in parameterizations of convection and why have these problems been so difficult to resolve? Conventional convection parameterizations remove instability by moving low level heat and moisture upwards. Compensating subsidence is in the same atmospheric column, which means that there is no horizontal redistribution of mass. This horizontally confined compensating subsidence leads to hot columns in the atmosphere, which is not realistic. Dynamical cores solve equations for grid box means of prognostic variables, which I will denote psi bar for a variable psi. The parameterization solves equations for plume mean variables, which I will denote psi one in a fraction sigma of the grid box. The grid box mean value is the area weighted sum of the plume mean variable and the value not in the plume, psi zero. Old fashioned parameterizations such as Gregory and Roundtree assume that sigma is small and so the green grid box mean is approximated by the value outside convection, as in psi bar is approximately equal to psi zero. This is an important approximation because it means that the convection parameterization only provides source terms to slowly varying variables and therefore doesn't threaten the stability of the dynamical core. Lappin and Randall overcome this limitation by solving prognostic variables for the double and triple correlations of vertical velocity anomalies. From these, they diagnose W1, that's W in the updraft, and sigma. This leads to a consistent set of equations that includes mass transport by convection, but the equation for the double and triple correlations are difficult to close and therefore the results may not be reliable. A factor that has enabled progress in developing powerful models is good modularization. Models are written by large teams with smaller groups working on well-defined problems such as the dynamical core and convection parameterization. More realistic, closer coupling between the dynamical core and convection with a direct feedback con from convection onto the con continuity equation breaks this paradigm. However, it may be the right thing to do. As resolution increases, the assumption that compensating descent is in the same column becomes worse. This is a diagram from Arakawa and Jung 
which highlights this problem. This problem has motivated a number of groups to include net mass transport by convection. Quell and Bott added a source term in the continuity equation for vertical mass transport due to convection. However, this was not handled by the semi-implicit dynamics, and I imagine that this was not stable for large sigma or for large time steps. Malardell and Bechtold made a similar extension to the ECMWF IFS model. However, they have only tested this scheme for small sigma and so have not run into stability problems. Tan et al. Pr proposed the extended eddy diffusivity mass flux model of convection, which is very similar to the multifluid approach. However, they have not solved the resulting 3D equations in a dynamical core. What should a parameterization that includes net mass transport by convection look like? I propose that it should solve separate equations for prognostic variables in separately defined fluids. These fluids could represent, for example, convective plumes and their stable environment. If we start with the Boussinesque equations for velocity and buoyancy, these can be conditionally filtered, leading to the multifluid Boussinesque equations. In these equations, I equals zero for fluid with W less than or equal to zero, i.e. the environment around convective plumes, and I equals one in updrafts or plumes. There are separate velocities, pressures, and buoyancies for each fluid. Capital U I J is the source term in the velocity equation due to transfers between fluids, and capital B I J is the source term in the, buoy in the buoyancy equation due to transfers. Sigma I is the volume fraction of fluid I and is governed by this transport equation, advected by the velocity in fluid I. And with transfers of mass mji from fluid j to i and mij from i to j. The continuity equation in the multifluid Boussinesque equations is a constraint on the divergence summed over all fluids. In order to solve this equation set stably, all of the momentum equations must be substituted into the continuity equation, not just the grid box mean velocity. Closures are needed to make the multifluid equations represent convection. The forms of these closures are constrained by conservation and consistency properties, and parameters are set by scale analysis. So far, we have not set any closures or parameters based on high resolution reference solutions. Further justification of these closures is provided in our recent James paper. The difference between the pressure in fluid I and the mean pressure is proportional to the individual divergence of each fluid. This form stabilizes the equations and has similarity to the Baer and Nunziato model of multiphase flow. The mass transfer from fluid I to J is set to be the dynamic entrainment, which is equal to the divergence for each fluid. There is a source term in the momentum equation due to mass transfers between fluids, since all the fluids do not have the same momentum. This form gives cons conservation of total momentum. Uij superscript T is the velocity of the fluid transferred from I to J, which may not be the same as the velocity of fluid I. Similarly, there is a source term for the buoyancy equation due to mass transfers. This form provides energy conservation. Bij superscript T is the buoyancy of the fluid transferred from I to J. We propose that the horizontally of, horizontal velocity of fluid transferred will be equal to the velocity of the giving fluid. So Uij transferred for U and V is equal to Ui and Vi. However, since conditional filtering is based on W, the fluid transferred will have W equals zero by definition. So W i j transferred is zero. The buoyancy of the fluid transferred will depend on subgrid scale variability. We will present results using B i j transferred is equal to B i, which assumes that the buoyancy of the fluid transferred is equal to the buoyancy of the giving fluid. 
The parameter, parameter gamma in the closure for pressure has units of diffusivity and by scale analysis depends on a buoyancy scale to the power half and a length scale to the power three over two. In order to validate the multi-fluid model, I will show comparisons with a well-resolved single fluid Boussinesque simulation of a rising bubble. The buoyancy is on the left and the horizontal mean buoyancy of the rising and falling fluids and the total horizontal mean buoy buoyancy is on the right. After a thousand seconds, the buoyant fluid has risen to near the top of the domain. In the horizontal means, there is some positively buoyant fluid in the sinking fluid. And due to the recirculation, recirculating flow behind the bubble, the regions which have W less than zero also rise up in the, the domain with the bubble. This does not mean that sinking fluid is rising. It means that fluid which has previously risen subsequently sinks and is included in the sinking fluid. After a thousand seconds, there are two peaks in buoyancy in the horizontal mean, but at 500 seconds, the flow is simpler and there is just one peak in the horizontally averaged buoyancy. It is these horizontal means that we are aiming to reproduce with a two fluid single column model. The top row shows the horizontal mean of rising and falling fluids for the single fluid, well-resolved bubble after 500 seconds. The bottom row shows the same variables for the two fluid single column model with dynamic entrainment between fluids, pressure for each fluid controlled by divergence with the constant of proportionality gamma set according to scale analysis and the buoyancy of the fluid transferred equal to the buoyancy of the fluid that it is leaving. The two fluid model simulates a realistic volume fraction of rising fluid. The buoyant fluid rises at about the right speed. The velocity in each fluid is similar to the resolved flow and the pressure differences between fluids has some similarity with the resolved simulation. Dan Shipley has been simulating Raleigh-Bernard convection using the single and two fluid Boussinesque equations. Raleigh-Bernard convection is the simplest fluid dynamical model of convection. The heat transported by the convection depends only on the Raleigh number, which is the relative strength of the buoyancy forcing to the diffusive mixing and on the Prandtl number. The left-hand plot shows the Raleigh-Bernard convection for a Raleigh number of 10 to the power five, where the flow is laminar and nearly steady with convective rolls transporting heat between the top and bottom boundaries. At a Raleigh number of 10 to the eight, as shown on the right-hand side, the flow is turbulent. This animation shows the buoyancy of Raleigh-Bernard convection with a Raleigh number of 10 to the power 10. We can see that Although positively buoyant air rises and negatively buoyant air sinks, there is not a one-to-one -one correspondence. We are conditionally averaging based on W, and so some neutrally or negatively buoyant air will be included in the rising fluid. Dan would like to talk about this simulation for a lot longer, but I am going to move on to comparisons of conditionally filtered means with the results of the single column two fluid model. These results for a rally number of 10 to the power five show the reference solution as a dashed line and the two fluid single column model as a solid, solid line. The rising fluid values are red and the sinking fluid values are blue. The dynamic entrainment model leads to a volume fraction of close to a half throughout the depth, which shows less variation than the resolved fluid. The buoyancy of each fluid is similar between the resolved and two fluid models. The pressure difference between the fluids is modeled well by the divergence with a constant of proportionality gamma set by scale analysis. The Nusselt number of the flow is a measure of the total heat transport. The two fluid model predicts a Nusselt number of 7.1, whereas the reference model, resolved model, predicts a Nusselt number of 5.01. At the higher rally number, 
the differences between the fluids are smaller due to the increased mixing between fluids. This is represented well by the two fluid model. The increased Nusselt number for the increased Raleigh number is also represented by the two fluid model with the Nusselt number of the two fluid model as 41 and the reference as 27.9. To conclude, the large persistent errors in convection parameterization could be due to neglecting mass transport by convection. However, mass transport by convection is difficult to include in conventional parameterization schemes. Instead, the dynamical core should solve multi-fluid equations for convection and the environment and possibly an additional fluid for downdrafts. Some closures are presented so that the multi-fluid equations represent dry, Boussinesque convection. We set the pressure of the individual fluids based on the divergence within each fluid and we use the dynamic entrainment set by divergence. With these simple closures, we have reproduced statistics of three validation test cases using a single column two fluid model. The first is a rising bubble a radiative, radiative equilibrium test case is presented in our James paper, but not described here. Raleigh-Bernard convection is reproduced over three orders of magnitude of Raleigh number. Finally, thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to your comments and questions.